Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ming Jun Shan from uh, Company Stack. Uh, my talk is about uh, Uniview OpenStack from an solution. Before I start, I'd like to say thank you to the organizer of Open Infra Day Mexico 2022. And it has been a perfect opportunity for people to gather, synchronize, and learn from each other. Thank you again. The subject today I'm going to talk includes the necessity of last mile adaptation engineering or open source adoption. And afterward, I would introduce UniView and there's uh, some overview information and a demo and a free edition access information. About the company stack, which is a development and engineering Fox business. And in Canada, it, the main the vision is to bring the high complex cloud technology down to the earth by you know, bridging the gap between upstream tech into real world requirements. The latest effort will be the front end solution which provides the need of last mile adaptation over the open source technology. So talking about the last mile engineering and the open stack, uh, I like to refer one blog actually published on Canonical website which says that uh, the, the OpenStack just provide tool and to help people reinvent the cloud. Uh, do not only meet the growing demand of enterprise need, but as well create a new use case. The future of the cloud is not only open, it's OpenStack. There's, um, there are multiple implications. First of all, you know, the OpenStack will kind of a tool for people to reinvent the cloud, but that's constantly creating new use case. The future is a very well acknowledged tool. But that's um, also another implication that, um, you know, open source is open stack or other, it barely out of box ready for the enterprise. There's a ton of last mile engineering needed. Here list of uh, some of them from business point of view for the open stack. So the people need last mile engineering about you need the branding, the logo, the slogan, uh, the title, your process, and the integrity of your service and data. You know, if you look at the current deployment of open stack, from this to other, to another, you barely can see a different level of integrity of the service. That's a quite a significantly different. You may experience this purely virtual machine and some other quite comprehensive with more complete view from a cloud point impl implies, what a cloud implies. Even the same thing for the user experience that, you know, uh, from a, from a development or research sense to a complete business user uh, experience are quite different. And the, a lot of adaptation to your business as well. So the way of install today, you know, I think that's a ton of different way of uh, provisioning, which I'm pretty sure that many of those can bring people to a decent provisioning, a decent cloud to stand up, that, uh, become, which become less concerned of today. The, another factor is the hardware, of course, it um, 
very critical information. But I like to highlight only two of those. One is integrity of service and data, another is user experience. So that's where we see that um, OpenStack render a quite a difference across each deployment. We rate it as five star, which means it's quite uh, something for a business to success to succeed. So the integrity and integrity and user experience are perceived as the two most important crit uh, factor today. That's how the Uniview is, you know, came into for helping. First of all, you know, it targeted to create create kind of expectation, consistent expectation for people when they build a cloud. And if you look at the Uniview of uh, the high level architecture, you know. Uniview support what support almost every component of OpenStack, most popular one, of course, if not complete, for Keystone, Neutron, all the way to designing selling the Noki. But it does support certain non OpenStack components as well, including the Kubernetes. It does provide a Kubernetes dashboard or the native Kubernetes API. It supports the rough. Safe Rodos Gateway, which actually I, th I would say quite close to Swift API, but just a, a little different. It does support Safe RESTful API too. And the portal itself is a just container service. It does need a database behind. And uh, it is recommended to have a, a lot of balancer, either NGIN or actually proxy alike to sit in front of the portal. So that uh, not a part of our package, but it will be expected to be deployed by the end user. Here's the main feature and practice. First of all, it's just a sense of premium over many high complex developments. I think all across the um, board, you can see some jack and job, the fancy wizard, the full tuned transparent for each progress, including especially uploading the Swift API, uh, object, uh, creating resource like uh, um, Kubernetes clustering, uh, creating a watch motion, the full tuned transparency for the process. You can you can see the same across the board. The second feature is user centralized with highly customizable choice. You know, this portal serves a, a baseline for people to customize. But um, you know, each end user may select applicable item to them, and with a minimal customization to set one expectation a consistent expectation for a cloud. The third is full user lifecycle. It does provide registration, editing, inviting, forget password, billing, payment, and other from user point of view. Uh, so that's uh, somehow because uh, maybe financial or business specific uh, information may not that make that uh, less uh, appropriate component to implement in the open source that somehow you know last mile engineering can take care of. yeah i forgot to see the user centralized organizing that's something, you know, I think different from a technology like uh, Horizon, which, uh, you know, it has to cater for different component need that's more technology centralized. You know, you can stack one over another 
one component from a keystone cinder horizon uh, to kill for each component actually one by one with less cohesiveness and uh, uh, more technology centralized. But for this uh, portal, it's just an organized view based on what a user wants to see from there. The another point is tons of security utility. That's a uh, many MFA encryption. Uh, so for such stuff, as well, very much poor business business um, uh, process, and it barely can be out of box without knowing uh, certain the business context, like the fraudulent protection. It will require your DNS, require your test of choice to make this feature ready. And uh, another feature is to meet the need of a large scale enterprise cloud. I think this is important that um, Uniview does support multiple region and there's uh, unlimited concurrency support as well. You know, the performance tunes to support a large user base. The comprehensiveness, which means it does support all different components of the OpenStack. It's uh, most widely used component are being supported. But if there's no, we like to hear, to receive the feedback and we can add the same. So last point is easy integration, working with the most digital deployment. So I like to highlight that this portal has no requirement on existing your OpenStack deploy, as long as you comply with the, with the OpenStack uh, practice. But we see some a little bit inconsistency, mostly caused by unstandard, non-standard deploy. So before I jump into the demo, there is some access info. You can see, by the way, there is a free, there's addition for community to use. Uh, for small deployment, that's no key needed. You can put the image and stand up. That's it. It will work with the most of uh, this show. But for non-profit organization, even that's a bigger deployment, so the on-demand portal key, a portal key will be provided. You can go to put the image at comment stack slash interview open portal. The latest tag always available for downloading, and you may use uh, the tag specific to months, like 2022 uh, August September. You know, it also available. A GitHub uh, portal is provided for the install guide and user space. You know, there's uh, you can question the collaboration. A tube channel, YouTube channel as well, providing more tutorial and demo. And for any question, you can contact admincomputer.com or visit uh, our website. Yeah, I think of this, uh, we will start a, a, a light demo so the people can get impression what they are. That's uh, also, we like to have a QA and uh, the contact information. Thank you. Hi, let's start the portal demonstration. Just uh, go to the home page. Type the username. And you see the welcome page. Provide a user entry for the different service and you can explore all the service installed. There is all also the workload list. <clears throat> you can see the instance about the balancer, how many running clusters, volume, security group, all the common 
you know, information the user would be looking for. And there is a wizard, so user can start build a solution from a launch washing machine, or you can start create an orchestrated heat stack, or you can start stand up the Kubernetes cluster. And there's a warning and alarming that's cost and use the information, but there's also one panel for providing extra documentation link. And we can have a look at this menu. That's a cloud monitoring and a cloud watch information, which provide API access. And uh, there's a project dashboard. You can see the, and the current project instance, workload, resource limit, and words usage information. If the admin, which uh, who can access the admin dashboard, see there is a more information including the hypervisor, three hypervisor, the project user, the workload, each service status, so far it print Nova Cinder Neutron, the most important one. And it has the resource limit. See, we can see the CPU consumption to memory file. There also, we can see the block storage, the capacity utilization 5%. That's a, if there is a save, it can print out save information as well. So you have click to clubs and print out the all the poor project usage statistic. You can come to the alarm. If there is alarm configured, you can see the list. If there is a metric, uh, you can have a view of the metric. I say you can click an instant. You want to see the CPU compare the CPU. You can compare select three of instant of, and you can see the CPU utilization over the time. If you change the duration, I see 12 hour, I see three day. And uh, you can select duration to zoom in. And uh, see, you know, you find the granularity to look at what the CPU variation over time. So there is a cloud service including computer Kubernetes database storage and orchestration. And we can take a look at its compute. There's a instance view and you have the option to select what you want to look. And if you select only one of them, more detail will be printed. See the, the information. If two instance selected, let, let me use the part one can see the the metric can be printed in the same diagram let's just provide a user a better window in the troubleshooting to compare to get an impression and uh, so if you select launch instance, let's do so by create a, a real watch machine. And you see there's a multiple option. You can create from volume, from snapshot. Let's, uh, you can select uh, operating system. Or I me, mean, Ubuntu. Let's start from a CentOS, I see. We're gonna create a CentOS OS. The first one, I select uh, C1 mi micro CentOS test. Select any keeper. So 
uh, create a new volume, but you can option to select yes or no to delete that after the termination of the instance. I select private network. Go to next. And let's see, you have a different security group. You know, we, we can go default one. We can add another. There is another option you can select the server group and choose the user data. But we do nothing at now. And there's a review for security group two, instant detail, image type, and source detail. Let's just click submit. It may just take a, a short while for the creation to complete. And in the meanwhile, I think we can come to look at the uh, volume creation, which you see downloading. Actually, this is the volume we're going to use for this VM. And it take a short while, we will come back. In the meanwhile, let's look at the Kubernetes clustering. So this one was created earlier. I think we just uh, take a look for now. You can see that uh, all the OpenStack cluster information. If you go to the node and resource, you can see high level information of this cluster. It includes two class nodes, the consumption info, including the memory CPU uh, are printed here. There are also namespace. So far, you know, we see that a few name in, namespace in this cluster, but we also can create, uh, uh, let's say, Mexico Day O R O I P Mexico Day. So a new namespace just created. If we look at the let's see look at the master node, you know there's a result type condition. There's more detail to print the label annotation spec, but there's also YAML. And if there anything you want to change, for example, you want to down the instance, or you want to edit YAML, can there's a, if you edit any information, it will be implied right away. So if we go to the workload, let's select this controller. You have the YAML, and you have the pod and the deployment. You now these are and deployment. You can see the log of this pod. You can see the YAML. I think all this just provide users very convenient access when you want to explore or observe something, just maximize maximize the observability of the infrastructure. The YAML, everything will be printed just at a finger click. And the same thing if you look at the service. Uh, so the type, if there's, if you go to the configuration and uh, you can create uh, some instance. If uh, we quickly copy this one and we can create a Let's create some something new here. So I would delete this information and add word this user ID, but we use um, we call name Mexico Day. Our namespace call. OIP Mexico 
you know what? I think I need to look at the earlier. The instance info, the... Let's go to instance again to look at uh, the namespace which is created earlier. It's called OIP Mexico Day. Let's copy and we need to use this namespace here. So we can use the data as such. And uh, let's validate it right. Let's apply. See the new config map created. See, and if we, if we go back to the config map detail, we can, we can filter out by this namespace Actually, see the two things created by one config map. One is MySQL data, another default token. That's about uh, the Kubernetes uh, clustering because uh, you know that's uh, you can easily create a new cluster by select any pre-created template uh, easily, and you have the option to scale up and scale down by updating. For example, you want including one or two the computer nodes, but we don't do that. That's about the Kubernetes dashboard. Now let's go back to see the instance earlier, the creation we started. You see this one already running. And uh, so you also can go into the further detail. Uh, so overview, network interface, there's a log, Let's console. I think it took a, a moment to come up that you can see the action log, the monitoring, but that's not data yet because it just created. But if we go back to look at adding a specific instance which created earlier, you can see on the monitoring will show up. Yeah. So that's the database, but today we don't go dive into, but I think uh, it does support the chop, the MySQL instance management. But we can look at the storage, especially the container storage. That's the instance created, but let's start creating a, a new max day. This ticket bucket we just created. We can job in something let's say I want to job in the open stack uh, logo and company stack logo has two document just one job and upload see the instant two of them side are loading down and we close we come back, see, the writing is then already printed. So there are also the detail of the object, you can see the bucket your. So there's also self-clustering. If there's back end, you want to monitor self-clustering, it can help. You know, you don't need to pull out the self dashboard, but you can access from here. There's orchestration, the heat, and the selling clustering profile node cluster policy receiver, all this full life cycle of management are supported. As a billing, the cost dashboard, you can come here to look at the span summary, but of course, it's a 
but this cloud is because the back end does not support. You can look at the bill, select a month, and to download and print. From security, you have the project. Uh, from security and identity, it has uh, uh, all these uh, application credentials, key management, you have the user, that's global user group and project. It's also something you can manage the portal customization. So many information can be easily configured through this panel. And uh, so from user here, you can come to manage your account. One feature I like to show properly is the, the MFA. Let's uh, create any user. User test, I don't know, let's call thing. Give a password. User test admin. Let's get a project. Test project. Select a few row, and we can create. Test thing. You see, this user is, but we we have a. There's an option to disable manager, or you can manage password. If you, the admin can manage password on behalf of the user, then you also can manage the MFA. I see you want the, the user to have, have MFA in, in the mode. And you can simply assign. Then the, the user, you see, by now on, you need sign in will require the MFA. Yeah, I think that's a, a basic demo of the UniView portal. And, uh, thank you.